Now, I think everyone knows that uh, stupid people are easier to manipulate than others. But I think what a lot of times people don't think about is that at periods in your life or at periods in your mood, when you are stupider, you are easier to manipulate. Okay, it's a very simple principle. Now, in, um, you know, th there's a term in politics, right, or yeah, I guess in propaganda, right, called agitprop. And okay, that's agitation propaganda. It's propaganda that's put out there basically to make you angry. Um, now, the thing is, when you are angry, you are stupider in a, in a very real sense. When you're governed by a passion, you are, by definition, not thinking through what you're doing. You're at a lower level of cognition than you are usually, okay? So if you want to make someone stupid and therefore easier to manipulate, one very good thing to do is to make them angry if you are some kind of social engineer. Get them mad at something, right? Because if they're angry at something, if they fear for their lives, if they, you know, if they have all these like pressing existential concerns, right, uh, that are, it might be totally confabulated, um, they are much more likely to make extreme sacrifices. They're much more likely, like if they, if they feel, if their juices, their anger juices are flowing all the time, if they're totally governed by their emotions and their passions, they can be basically made to do anything, okay? Now, I'm actually not talking about uh, any specific, I don't, I don't know, political side or, or thing here. What, what I really mean is because, you know, the powers that be, they manipulate their people to do this. They keep them in a constant state of anger and fear and things like this to motivate them. But exactly in the same way, they, keep, they want to put their enemies in the same position. They want them to be constantly angry. And, you know, what based Twitter users do all, the day, all day now is they just, like, retweet stuff to make each other angry and get each other, quote-unquote, motiv motivated. Now, they're not motivated to actually do something because, really, there's nothing to do in most of these cases, right? It, it's things that I think people need to understand are out of their control that are being forced on them, not even because of what they are, but because they are making you angry. Like, the media likes doing that. They like throwing absurdities in your face. They like saying very blatant lies, not just to deceive people. In fact, really, it's not really to deceive people. It's really partially to get them mad and get them agitated, right? So there are a lot of people online now who will just be angry all the time. I mean, maybe not even like angry, angry, but there is a sense in which they're constantly like pessimistic. They're constantly like, oh my goodness, like all this terrible stuff is happening and we can't do anything. Rise up eventually, blah, which is a total LARP, okay? Uh, it, it's frankly like kind of Fed posting. Like you're, you're basically being forced into doing Fed posting at that point. Uh, and that, that's the point. Like the, the thing is when you're angry and you're not thinking through what you're doing, you want to fight battles that you can't win. You want to, uh, you know, die on principles that might, like, things aren't really as bad as you think, right? The media wants you to feel like the walls are closing in. They want to produce that vision of inevitability, right? And if you're on the internet all day, if you're reading posts on Twitter.com uh, all the time, and you're just getting angry at stuff, and you're not, if you're, you're not out there talking to real people, you are going to have a very, I don't know, contorted view of the world, you know what I mean? And that's the point. Like, the, the, I think the point, uh, one, one thing that I think the media does very deliberately is they do try to make people angry, even their enemies angry. And you might think, oh, well, they're motivating them. That's bad. No, like, if, if they're making you angry, they're making you angry in a domain that you don't have control over, okay? Because they want you to act out. They want you to feel like you can't do anything. Like, that impotence is, is their desire, right? So, you know, this is why it's very important not to fall into passions like, uh, anger and, and things like this, because in most cases, you actually can't do anything. If someone assaults you, in that example, if someone assaults you physically in real life, okay, a lot of the reason that they do that is because they know that they can beat you, right? They know that they're, they're going to be able to pound you if you react. Like, they want to provoke you, okay? This is the point. And in politics, it's the same way. If the media or the opinion molding class or any of these kind of people, if they're doing egregious things that you know, might elicit a reaction. They are expecting that reaction because you work for them. If, if, you are, if you are reacting emotionally to things, you are working for them. You're doing their bidding. I actually, you know, did a video a good bit ago about, um, you know, how, how this applies to, uh, I, I guess, um, you know, how people view freedom or 
I, I guess especially sec in the sexual domain, right? There is a sense in which if you can get people thinking about sexual things all the time, because that's a passion, because that's something that, you know, they f it's more part of your animalistic brain, it's much easier to predict people's behavior if you're, if you're tying them to these lower, more baser instincts. And it's the same way in anger. Now, this isn't, you might be saying, oh, well, Luke, you're, you're endorsing like some kind of uh, apathy or something like that. No, what I, I endorse, what I've always endorsed, and that is you have to have control over your own, well, firstly, you do have control over your own life and people around you and who you associate with and who you work for and all of this kind of stuff. And these are the things that actually change things. Like I, the thing that annoys me, I should say, I'm not angry, I'm just annoyed, is, you know, these people, again, people who go on Twitter.com and get angry all the time, and then, you know, they don't actually change anything about their own life. They're still buying from Amazon. They're still, like, using social media and, you know, interacting with friends on social media and doing all this stupid stuff. Like, they're doing the exact same things that are feeding into the system. So they're not actually, like, making a difference. They're just getting angry in the meantime. And they're really losing on both fronts. The, the real solution, I mean... Most of the issues in the world, you can voluntarily separate yourself from them. And by voluntarily separating yourself from them, you actually make the problem less bad. That, that's the issue. Like if, if you step away from the beast system, there is a sense in which it loses power. And you also are, are basically public, publicly setting a, an example for what other people are doing, right? What, what other people should do, right? You, you might think that you're fighting against the system, but you're really not. If you... If you are emotionally reactive, you're losing. That's all I have to say. So that's just something to think about.